Amen. You believe that this morning? Amen. Amen. The King is coming, and He's coming for you and me. Hallelujah. Welcome to Harvest Chapel, everyone. So glad you came to join us in worship this morning in our live stream or internet, wherever you're at. But they, we're coming to the Father's house, the house of prayer. And I'm so glad you came to join us this morning because this is the Father's house and we came to give him praise. Amen. The King is coming. Hallelujah. And we're so thankful this morning. And this scripture here is in, first, in John's 14 that says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house is many mansions. If it was not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and re receive you unto myself. And that where I am, that ye may be also. Hallelujah. What a promise this morning. That we'll be with the Lord. Would you would stand with me this morning? And give him that praise and give him that glory and give him thanks for what he's done for us in our lives. Who have redeemed us and saved us and brought us with a price, the precious blood of Jesus. Let's stand a few moments in his presence and just thank him. Hallelujah. Precious Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we're so thankful this morning for Jesus. And for your Holy Spirit, which comes to dwell with us. You said in your word, you would not leave us, Comforter. But you would sit in the spirit of truth. And we're so thankful this morning that we can worship you in spirit and truth. And worship to our God, our Father. In Jesus' name, we ask your anointing, your blessing upon each one that came this morning. Encourage hearts, strengthen bodies, heal bodies, and renew us by the power of your Holy Spirit. For we believe it and receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. As Karen continues to lead us in worship this morning. God bless you. Amen. It was mentioned this morning by Sue Mock and also by him. The presence of the Holy Spirit, and I love what Exodus 40, 34 says. Then the cloud covered the tent of meeting, and the glory of the Lord Amen. filled the tabernacle. So come into his presence this morning.
sing our next song, I have a beautiful poem I want to share with you. It was written by a John Oxenham. Not what but whom I do believe, that in my darkest hour of need hath comfort that no mortal creed to mortal men may give. Not what but whom. Amen. For Christ is more than all the creeds, and his full life of gentle deeds shall all the creeds outlive, not what I believe, but whom. Who walks beside me in the gloom? Who shares the burden wearisome? Who all the dim way doth illume and bids me look beyond the tomb? The larger life to live? Ah, oh, not what I believe, but whom. Not what, but whom. He thrills my soul and my heart panteth after him.
welcome the Holy Spirit in this place this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, this is the time, if you're new with us today, that we get to pray. We get to have this time where we're going to pray for people online, people here. The ones that you want to intercede for, bring forward according to James 5, where they say you can bring the elders forward and they can anoint you with oil uh, if you have a need of healing. So we're going to do that, but we're going to read a couple of praise reports first and then the prayer request, and then we'll have the elders come forward. Um, a couple of praise reports. Doug Vincent, he came through his kneecap surgery, and he is home. So give God praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Jody Ash's sister, Kathy, received Jesus as her Savior. Thank you. Praise God. Laura Harrison, Dorothy Slaybaugh's daughter, uh, had her thyroid removed, and it was not cancerous. We prayed for that. Hallelujah. That is an answer to something we prayed for. Thank you, Jesus. And I also have a praise report for Bobby and Charlie, who were part of our congregation here that moved to Virginia. Uh, they said they're having a wonderful time with their family. They feel like they're exactly where they need to be for this time. They bought a new home on a river, and they are so thrilled. They wanted to share that as a praise report this morning. So hallelujah. That's awesome. We're so happy for them. We're continuing to fast our 30 minutes a day and read the Word of God out loud for Rich Henry. We're continuing prayer for him and Julie and Betty and your whole family. And um, Ed Clean, um, Lorraine's son-in-law, he is still struggling with cancer. He's having a hard time, so we need to continue to ask God for his healing and believe God for the peace in his body and a healing touch. Lorraine's um, also, George, Lorraine's husband, um, had a heart blockage. He was in the hospital this week, but he is home, but he had to have two stents put in, and he is recovering, so we'll keep him in our prayers as well. Uh, Jordan Rosa will be having surgery this Tuesday for his broken arm. Yikes. <laughs> Jordan. Um, for those of you who don't know, he's serving in the military. Um, Sherry's Uncle John is in the hospital in Ohio, and uh, he started dialysis yesterday. So Sherry will keep your uncle in prayer. And if anything that I just read or anything that's in your bulletin or whatever's on your heart, this is the time we're going to call the elders forth right now and they could pray for you and you could come forward. I'm going to ask that you stand so people can easily get in and out. If you would stand, please come into agreement for the prayers of the people we just mentioned. And if there's anything that wasn't mentioned that you need prayer for, please come forward. Let's come into agreement. And you can stretch out a hand when people come forward in agreement, stand in for somebody. Maybe there's a family member you need to stand in for that's even unsaved. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we bring this request to you in the name of the Lord, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We thank you, Father, that you hear our prayers and that Jesus is in the right hand of the Father, ever interceding for us. What a thought that you care about everything that's going on in our bodies, everything that's on our mind, in our hearts. Father, there's many, I'm sure, requests here that haven't been mentioned, and everybody here has needs, and you are our need meter. And we thank you, God, that you are holy, and that you are righteous, and that you are just, and that you are kind, and that you are merciful, that you are holy. And we give you praise in this place this morning for the answered prayers that have already taken place and the ones that are coming. We believe you with great expectation that you are going to touch and heal anybody who needs a healing in this place right now. Those are in line that you're, you're the greatest story in scripture when your word says there was a gentile centurion that said i understand authority and the very voice of god that went forward would be enough to touch and heal so we call forth the word of god right now and said be ye healed in the name of jesus whatever you have need of if it's emotional healing we break off addiction we break off pornography we break off drugs, alcohol, whatever any issues that anybody might be struggling with, emotional pain, loneliness, um, despair, whatever it might be, God, we just ask, you know what the issues are with each person. Would you touch them in the place that they would need to be ministered to right now, God? We thank you for it, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. 
praise you, Lord. We thank you, God, this morning for what you're going to do. I pray an anointing on this service, and we thank you for it. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. You may be seated. Amen. You may be seated. Rick? 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 I asked the elders uh, that would hear me. Uh, no. <laughs> they, they would uh, stay up here. I want you people to know that I lean upon this board of elders so greatly. Uh, they come to the church with wisdom and anointed lives, and uh, I, I lean upon them heavily, and uh, they are my constant, constant help. And so they are anointed, and when they pray for you, it makes a difference, let me tell you. When they pray for me, it makes a difference as well. But I also uh, thought it would be a great thing this morning as we uh, are going to add another member to the Board of Elders. And I would like Perry Sears to come, if you would, right now. I'd like the elders to gather around him and anoint him and pray for him. So, fellas, come on around and anoint him, if you would. And uh, I'm going to ask you to pray for him. Lord, I thank you for this wonderful man of God. Thank you for what he brings to this house of God. I ask you, Lord, for a special anointing upon him, that, Lord, it will even surprise him. The things that come out of his mouth, the places he goes, and, and, and everything that you'll do in his life. Thank you for letting him be a part of this wonderful team of elders. I th pray, God, that uh, he will understand the value of his participation in this eldership. So anoint him now afresh and anew, I pray, in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen and amen. We love you, pal. Wow. Isn't God good? Hey, I, I even enjoyed the uh, songs, especially good today. They went back in my memory, took me back to when I was growing up. As a matter of fact, uh, years ago, a couple years ago, when Jan, Pastor Jan and I were teenagers, um, I looked across the pew. Back then they had pews, you know, and I saw this cute girl. Whoa. So I hope she noticed me, but in case she didn't, I got the hymnal, opened it up to find a title to a song that would express how I felt about her. So I dog-eared that page, sent it down the pew and it hit her. She opened it up and it said, I need thee every hour. She went, oh. well, she answered too. So she looked up what she would want to respond, dog-eared it, sent it down to me. I opened it up with great anticipation. It said, God will take care of you. <laughs> I don't think that was appropriate, but you know. I, it is a delight and a thrill to have Bob and Marla back home again. Wow. <laughs> Bob said he's still vibrating from the, from the traveling. She even threw him out of the vehicle, or he fell out or something one time. But we've been missing you and uh, your saxophone and uh, Bob's leadership among the men eating breakfast. And so we appreciate it so much. It's also thrilling to have Mel and Jody back with us because they have been on the road and they went on a, a trip, especially up to Ohio, to make sure that uh, Jody's sister was prepared in her heart. To receive Jesus as your Savior, and that happens. So that's thrilling. And this, get this now. This is a very special service because Kathy Keller, this is her last Sunday with us. Stand up, Kathy. I want everybody to see you. And I want them to hug you and tell you goodbye because we love you. We love you. And she's going back to Indiana. We've got a lot of Indiana people here. I had some guests last week from Indiana. I said, Hey, you got a lot of Indiana people here. Indiana people, they think their dirt is special. As a matter of fact, Dick Jones brought dirt 
down from Indiana here to grow his tomatoes here. <laughs> and I say, they think it's special. All the Indiana people say, it is special, yeah. But also, we've got some guests here. Linda and Linda are here. Stand up, girls. I want everybody to see you. This is Linda and Linda. Two Lindas. Thanks, girls, for coming. God bless you. <laughs> Good to see Faye Buckner back, too. Bless her heart. Faye, glad to have you back home again. Wow. Holding it down the back row. But I saw you. You can't hide from me. Um, we have a work day every Thursday between 9 and 11. Was between 9 and 11 because of the heat. It's getting changed a little bit. But we have uh, not only clean the outside but, and the inside, but we clean the air to make sure during this flu season that uh, everything you touch is clean and everything you breathe is clean as well. We also have an inside crew and an outside crew and a shrubbery crew. <laughs> the inside crew, it <laughs> I never know what kind of picture they're going to show up with. It looks like that they, they don't work at all, but they were dealing with, uh, learning with the kids, I guess. That's study time for them, I guess. But no, they really do work hard. And let me tell you, crews like this save this church a lot of money when they come and volunteer and help like they do. Also, then we had, now, the outside crew, they came in at like 7 o'clock in the morning. Right, Bill? Because it gets hot. And so this is a picture, picture from last week. I was just Bill and Frank. But they also had a, an understudy uh, that came, Larry Stevens, and he said that he's not pictured there, but he said he realized that he, he was under tutorship, and he said <laughs> that he looked around, he, they said that he was the top of the class, he looked around, he was the only one in the class. So, <laughs> well, Larry, thank you. We'll get your picture next week. Come in early, I pray. And by the way, if there's, if there's any other of you that can help, come and do that as well. Outside, of course, this. They are so faithful, Connie and Lyle, taking care of all the shrubbery. And, and I think all of these people need a nice hand of applause. Amen. I'm telling you, if we had to hire that out, it would be very, very expensive. But we pr pr appreciate everybody coming with their expertise and helping us keep the house of God looking good on the inside and the outside. Also, if you meet somebody who wants to know about Harvest Chapel, send them to harvestchapelofvenice.org. It'll tell you who we are, what we are, and what we stand for, what to expect when you come. And a lot of current pictures, as a matter of fact, in his hospital room, on his laptop, Rich Henry keeps everything up to date and keeps everything going. And we appreciate him so much. And uh, God's going to raise him up, wait and see. God will. And, you know, a lot of times God's schedule is not ours. We want it now, Lord, now, right now. <laughs> but every time you go through a challenge like this, it draws you even closer to the Lord. Uh, also, he let us in on this fact, too, that if you buy something from Amazon, don't just go to Amazon, go to Smile Amazon, and then they pay a, a percentage of uh, their proceeds come to the church. So I think that's really good. Now we're going to have Miss Jones going to come and tell us more that's happening at Harvest Chapel. Welcome, Joan Popio. Will you do that? Well, good morning, Love Church and the Love family that is streaming us today. We welcome all of you. We extend an invitation to all of you personally to join us here at Harvest Chapel on Sunday. We make available an 8.30 service and a 10.30 service. And now this is the time in the service where we recognize with a very special welcome anybody who has never been here before. So anyone who's not been here, please raise your hand so that our ushers can see you because we have a little packet for you. And inside that packet, there's a little card. And at your convenience, if you would put whatever information you feel comfortable with and put it in the little treasure chest that's in the back entranceway. And thank you for coming. We hope you feel the presence of the Lord in this place, as we do. We have three birthdays today. Jim Abrams, Karen Stevens, happy birthday, my friend. And Lisa Wright, Tom's here, but Lisa was in the first service, and we did wish her a happy birthday then. Tomorrow, July 18th, is... Yep, for sure. Darlene Tintori, happy birthday, my friend. 
And next to her seated is our friend Lillian, who is her neighbor who came to be with her today. We love Lillian. And on July 23rd is DZ Sweet. DZ, it would be nice if you actually physically came here sometime. Yeah. And we actually have um, an anniversary for Dick and Rebecca Hartung that is on July 19th. Oh, that's today. Today is, is, is Dick and Rebecca Hartung. Happy anniversary, you two. On July 19th is Tom and Lisa Wright. Did we miss any birthdays today? Did we miss any birthdays or anniversaries? That's why I have to say this week, because he raises his hand all the time. Your pastor. Our share the word is with our sumac. You know, you're really missing something if you don't come on Wednesday to listen to the absolute Holy Spirit inspired inspiration that she gives to each through these scriptures. It's from three to four on Wednesday. We are in the book of First John. Sometimes you have to go to other books, but we are basically in First John. If you would like to come at 4 p.m., then we sit in the Lord's presence for 30 minutes and listen to him. It's a very busy world that we live in. This is a very quiet time to be refreshed through the power of the Holy Spirit. So if you're out there and you're around, try coming over to listen to the Lord. Our woman's prayer group is led by Darlene Tintori and Carol Salvia. We meet every Thursday morning right here, 1030, right here at Harvest Chapel. Prayer is really a very powerful, powerful weapon at this time in our world and in our life. Our Sunday school class is taught by Trace Vindich and me. It is between services at 930. Please feel free to join us. Whether you have to leave early or not is not a problem. They really had a Holy Spirit celebration time today. We want to thank you for your faithfulness in giving, and we pray for God's blessing to be upon each and every one of you. If you are watching, via live stream, then we've made it possible for you to give online, and that information is right now on the overhead. Now, people, we are still in need of help on Thursdays to maintain the outside, actually the inside, too. Our workers are coming at 8 o'clock. If you want to be here at 7 o'clock, fine. But because of the heat, we've changed the time. That you, If it's your convenience, you know, to come earlier, be here. If you can give us any amount of time, we would appreciate it, whether you are inside workers or outside workers. And I, thank, I do personally thank all of you who do this work. Believe me, the grounds always look beautiful. The inside of the church always looks clean and beautiful. Thank you, Marla, for heading this inside crew up. Also, we want to remind you that next Sunday night, starting at 6 p.m., July 24th, Larry Ford and his family will be ministering in song. Bring somebody with you. Just be lifted up in the spirit. I think I have all of the CDs that Larry Ford has made, and there's a story about how I got those, which I won't tell you now. I want you to remember Pastor Jan's acronym for the word faith, forever. Am I trusting in him? That will put a smile on God's face. Trust him. Love you guys. Good morning. I think I got it right this time. I don't normally get to read scripture at 1030. So 830 says everybody hello. Before I read the scripture this morning, I want to know, read this little thing to you I found this morning in the daily bread, our daily bread. I don't know how many of you read that. 
but it's a wonderful little devotion. And it, I just read it and read it. It caught my eye. The verse that goes with it is Deuteronomy 2nd chapter, the 17th verse. He has watched over my journey, and I have not lacked anything. That's wonderful, isn't it? And then it goes on to talk about roadmaps. Some people pick the wrong roadmap. They follow it to the wrong places. And that roadmap, you know where it begins? Why Arizona? And then you continue west to uncertain Texas. And then you kind of go northeast a little bit. Dismal Tennessee. You know? And then you get to the end, it's panic, Pennsylvania. Now, if we follow God's map and His route, we're going to end up in Assurance, West Virginia. Wonderful. Now, today's scripture lesson comes from Luke, the 12th chapter, 16 through 31. It's a wonderful parable that we are all familiar with. Jesus told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I'll tear down all my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain. Plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take it easy. Take it easy. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool! This very night, this very night, your life will be demanded from you. Then, who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich toward God. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore, I tell you, do not, do not worry. Do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food, and the body is more than clothes. Consider the ravens. They do not sow or reap. They have no storerooms to barns, and yet God feeds them. He feeds them. And how much more valuable are you than birds? Who of you, by worrying, by worrying, can add one single hour to your life? Since you cannot do this very little thing, this very small thing, why do you worry about the rest? Consider the lilies of the field. They toil and spend not. Yet I tell you, I tell you, even Solomon in all of his splendor was not dressed like one of these. If that is how God closes the lilies of the field, which is here today and gone tomorrow, thrown into a fire, how much more will he clothe you of little faith? Little faith. And do not set your hearts on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry. Worry's in there quite a bit, isn't it? We like to worry. Do not worry about it. For the pagan world runs after such things, and your Father knows you need them. But seek His kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. May God add His blessing to the reading of His Word. I'll tell you, that guy delivers the Word of God. <laughs> he does. and brings accent to it, which I appreciate that. A 16-year-old girl told me the other day, she said, 
I get so confused sometimes I say something I forget what I said. I said, brace yourself. <laughs> the older you get, the worse it's going to get. Sometimes we have problems, you know. That's why uh, we keep reminding ourselves, like the scriptures reading and what have you. So that's why I keep pushing this. So you, you know it's time to stand, don't you? All right. And time to repeat this so that we won't forget it. <clears throat> it's out of uh, Psalm 34.1. And it's our New Year's resolution. Here we're halfway through the year. Let's all say it together. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will always be in my mouth. And everybody said, amen. amen. You may be seated. Wow. <laughs> Mercy. If I could just live up to that, I would have no regret at all the things I said. I was always making sure God is near because he inhabits the praises of his people, right? Well, <clears throat> years ago, we used to have impromptu testimony services when people would just jump up and they, sometimes they call it popcorn service where they pop up and give a testimony about the Lord. Kind of like ours was uh, last Sunday night. We had a wonderful and, and a very inspiring time together with those personal testimonies that came forth. I've often said the reason why God meets our need, heals us because two reasons. Number one, he has compassion on us. Secondly, for his glory. And so it's very important that we tell the goodness that God has done in our life. But back then, <laughs> some of those testimonies were just funny. Never know what they were going to say, unscripted. Some of them were revealing too. And even some were even shocking. <laughs> I heard about a lady who stood up to testify she said God has given her the supernatural ability to forgive. She said, for instance, <laughs> oh. you know, Mr. Brown, he's sitting back there in the back row. You know, he accidentally shot and killed my late husband. Well, I want you to know the Lord has given me the ability to forgive Mr. Brown. She said, I have no anger, no rage. I have no bitterness or hatred or unforgiveness for him. And Mr. Brown, I want you to know that I personally forgive you in front of everybody here. She said, I'll even go even further, Mr. Brown. I believe the Lord would help me to forgive you again if you would accidentally shoot and kill my present husband. <laughs> I don't know what it has to do with the scripture, but stand with me this morning, if you will. <laughs> I'm reading out of Luke, seventh chapter. 44 to 50. Jesus said to Simon, look at this woman kneeling here. When I entered your home, you didn't offer me water to wash the dust from my feet. But she has washed them with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You didn't greet me with a kiss. But from the time I came in, she has not stopped kissing my feet. You neglected courtesy, the courtesy of olive oil. To anoint my head, but she has anointed my feet with rare perfume. I tell you, her sins, and they are many, have been forgiven. So she has shown me much love. But a person who is forgiven little shows little, only little love. Then Jesus said to the woman, your sins are forgiven. The men at the table said among themselves, who is this man that goes that he goes around forgiving sins. And Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you, go in peace. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for your teaching, your guidance, and Lord, the way you can help us understand things of heaven and of God in earthly terms. I ask you, Lord, to anoint this message, bring it to our hearts, search our past, our subconscious, and our conscious. In Jesus' name we pray, and everybody said, Amen. you may be seated. Can you imagine that scene that I just read of the scripture? It's a familiar account to some, but also it's one of controversy, controversy to some skeptics, to some church leaders, and even some Christians who don't understand the comparison that the Lord made. But I want you to know this today. Jesus is all about forgiveness. I personally believe unforgiveness causes a lot of unnecessary problems, 
I believe it uh, causes some self-inflicted challenges, and too often it separates the best of friends. The remarkable thing that these, those people that were at Simon's house witnessed was the power of forgiveness to, from God, not, not any degree that we could ever imagine. So for humans, forgiveness is very complicated a matter, and it's not easily given. In many cases, it takes supernatural help for us to forgive people who've done something against us. We think, surely, there should be something has to be paid for the bad things that someone's done to me or to someone else. But here's where the good news comes in. The price has been paid because Jesus paid the ultimate price for our forgiveness, and he requires, here it comes, and he requires us to offer the same forgiveness to others if we want ourselves to be forgiven. This morning I want to talk, take a journey down the road of forgiveness. Trust me, it's a road too, where it leads to God's blessings. But it also has some rough places along the way. We all will come to a decision in our life of a traumatic thing that happened to us, either a decision to forgive or not forgive as we travel this road. While the road of forgiveness leads to peace and forgiveness, the road of unforgiveness leads to bitterness and separation from God. So I want us to look at the two points that Jesus brought out in the scripture that I read for us today about forgiveness. He gives us a couple of keys to help us down the, <laughs> past the roadblocks that the devil put before us. His first point Jesus made was a basic requirement. You notice he got after Simon because he didn't give him any honor, any respect, and recognizing who Jesus is and receiving him as a savior is a requirement that we cannot get past. Second point he brought out was the limitless possibilities that forgiveness offers. Well, the road of forgiveness is not a busy road, but it should be. Because along that, there's a lot of bumps and there's a lot of on-ramps and off-ramps and breakdowns and, uh, along the way. But if we know where we're going on this road, it can bring incredible honor and respect in our lives. We experience a lot of roads today. I don't know about you, but I get down on the road and it's really crowded. And the people behind me are in a hurry. You ever notice that? I was driving down the road coming back from the hospital yesterday and right beside another car, and a motorcycle came between us. And I, John, I thought he was gonna end up with a splat one day, because it was amazing. Everybody's in a hurry, you know? The road of forgiveness should be filled, but let me tell you, it's not crowded, though it should be, because it uh, has the way of healing broken relationships. I know, it's getting quiet in here, I know this is a very sensitive and a personal subject, and some may think, Pastor, you have no idea what I've gone through. You're dealing in areas you shouldn't be dealing with. You never know what's been done to me. You have no idea the pain I've endured and the scars of my past. And some may think, Pastor, you just don't understand my anger. What if I just can't forgive? Shouldn't they have to pay for what they've done? They won't admit they've done anything. What about what I've had to take from them? What if I just can't let go? I'm afraid they'll do it again. Mm. Some even wonder, well, where do I begin? Well, we're going to start this journey, okay, on the road of forgiveness and see what God has to say about this issue. So the first point that Jesus drew to of our forgiveness was the requirement of it all. The first thing Jesus pointed out was the lacking of respect and honor. Confessing and believing in that Jesus is the Son of God is the first requirement for salvation. I didn't make it up. Paul said it in Romans 9, 10, 9, 10 and 11. He said, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart Jesus Christ is the Son of God and God raised him from the dead and you will be saved. 
But even after a person is born again, many Christians forget the next requirement. He said it early in his ministry. If you recall, in his first sermon, public ministry, in Matthew 6, 9 and 15, he said, when he taught his disciples how to pray, pray this way, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed or honored be your name. And just before he said amen, he made this requirement statement. Listen carefully. He said, if you forgive others who have sinned against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. Here it comes. But if you don't forgive others of their sins, your Father will not forgive you. You notice that um, only one offense that the Lord brought up that would put our soul in jeopardy. He didn't say murder. He didn't say thievery or sexual sins or any other terrible sin we might consider. But he said one requirement is made for us to forgive others or our soul is in jeopardy. I'm sorry I had to do that. The Lord's requirement for our own forgiveness is often left out of our conflicts and personal clashes and with others and some estranged situations continue to get worse. I'm sure you remember in Matthew the 18th chapter when Jesus was talking about forgiveness, Peter raised his hand and interrupted the Lord. And he asked him this question. I'm sure you're familiar with this. He said, Lord, how many times should we forgive a person? Seven times? <laughs> Jesus said, no, not seven times. Seven times 70. I would love to see the look on Peter's face when he did the math. 490 times. You've got to be kidding me. That's how powerful forgiveness is. Then Jesus gave an example that we all can understand. Here's what he said to them. A king wanted to settle his accounts, so he told a subject who owed him 10,000 bags of gold to pay up. Well, in probably in our currency, that's about $20 million. The man said, I can't pay right now. Have mercy on me. So the king ordered him and his wife and his children to be put in jail so they could pay the debt. Well, the guy fell on his knees and he begged, please have mercy on me, have patience with me, and I'll pay back everything. The king had pity on him and forgave his entire debt and let him go. Wow. Then the subject went home and he began to tally his books and he discovered that one of his servants owed him a hundred denarii, which would be a hundred dollars in our money. He went to the servant and he grabbed him and he began to choke him and he demanded that he pay back everything right now. The subject refused to, uh, to let the servant go and he, uh, even though the servant said, please forgive me, I'll pay back everything. Does that sound familiar? He said, I'll pay it all back. He refused to let him go, and he had the servant thrown in jail until he could pay back everything. Well, the king heard about it, and he called his subject back and said to him, You wicked man, I forgave you everything you owed because you begged me. So you should have had pity on your servant and forgiven him like I forgave you. Boy, then in anger, the king turned to the subject, turned him over to the jailers to be tormented until he could pay back all he owed. Here it comes. And Jesus said to Peter and the disciples, this is how my heavenly father will treat you unless you forgive others from your heart. Sad to say, but there are a lot of Christian families, Christian families who are no longer on speaking terms because of unforgiveness. It takes, I, I believe with all my heart, this is the number one problem among Christians. We wanna be forgiven, but we don't forgive 
like the Lord requires us to do. And it puts our soul in jeopardy. This should hit home to every one of us here because not one person here has had everything perfectly done to them. Some of you, all of us, have had a time when someone treated us the wrong way, did the wrong thing. And so this issue applies to every Christian that's here today. To achieve peace in a family or relationship it requires someone, here it comes, to initiate forgiveness. Someone to ask forgiveness and to give forgiveness. Jesus put it this way in his first sermon. Blessed is the peacemaker, because they will be called the children of God. Forgiveness brings new life to every situation. Forgiveness, or lack of it, will either bring contentment or constant grief for the rest of our life. Forgiveness is the only requirement by God that has so many wonderful possibilities. Are you with me? You know, sometimes, you know, you can vote. If by chance I say something you, you agree with, you can say amen, praise the Lord, glory to God, hallelujah, far out, right on too much, or at least give me a highly educated spiritual <laughs> a nod of approval. Yeah, I get it. The second point <laughs> that Jesus brought to attention to was the amazing possibilities of forgiveness. There are thousands of things that people believe are impossible. I hear people say a lot of times, that's hard to believe. I can't believe that. Well, we think that some things are impossible because of to forgive an injustice and no one gets punished for it. These are impossibilities. Jesus said, with man, it is impossible, but not with God. All things are possible with God. Aren't you glad of that? No matter what's happened in our past, the Lord can erase it, forgive it, and not even remember it ever happened. Now, the devil remembers. He'll keep bringing it up, but not the Lord. God is the God of great possibilities. That's actually something he specializes in. If it's hard to get past some of these hurts and forgivenesses, I want to give you a couple things to do to make it happen. To turn a hurt into a healing. To go from hate to forgiveness. And it's all a matter of the heart. Have you ever hit your thumb with a hammer? Anybody ever done that? Man, it'll test your Christianity. Oh, man, that hurts. <laughs> but in a few moments, the pain starts to subside. And the only thing that reminds us of that excruciating pain is a blackened thumbnail. <laughs> Physical pain reduces as the body heals. But emotional pain doesn't leave. It stays there. It festers. It grows. It goes on and on for years and seems impossible to get over. Here's the key. The healing must start from the inside out, not the outside in. Here's what Jesus said in Luke 4. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the good news of the gospel to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, that hits home to me, to proclaim liberty to the captives, that applies to me, and to set at liberty those that oppressed. Let me tell you, a conflict that's not been dealt with with forgiveness will oppress you. It will hold us captive, and it will break our hearts. Turning hurt to healing is a choice. We can either turn a hurt to hate or ask the Lord to heal our hearts. The most impossible hurt can be healed of God. I said the most impossible hurt can be healed of God. This is where <laughs> this turning the other cheek comes in. Remember the Lord's first sermon? He, some of the things he said just kind of blew their mind, thinking, you got to be kidding me. When Jesus said, if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them the other cheek also. <laughs> Right off the bat, it sounds like you're asking for more abuse. Oh, yeah, hit me over here too, you know. But what Jesus is saying, the height of insult 
It was a slap on the face. It's led a lot of people to dueling and death, you know, just the height of insult. Have you ever talked to somebody who's been hurt and all they talk about is their hurt? All they talk about is what they've gone through? That's the slap side of their face. And that's what they're showing forth all the time, the hurt. But the Lord is saying, turn the other cheek. This one. I may have had some problems, but God is good. I may have been insulted and hurt, but my story's not over yet. I may have had someone insult me and treat me bad and stomp on me and abuse me, but I want you to know God is with me and he's forgiven me and he's got, that's what you need to set forth. Not all the bad stuff, but the good. turn the other cheek. And everybody said, Amen. with God's help, we can forgive a person. But here's the problem that Jesus addressed with Peter. How many times? 490 times. Because let me tell you, some people are concerned that the one who hurt you will do it again and they do it again and do it again. That's the problem. So what we have to do is let go. That's the second thing. First thing was uh, to make sure that, what did I say first? Oh, yeah. I remember. Oh, Turn healing, uh, hurt to healing. That's the first thing. Second thing was let go. In the Lord's Prayer, the word forgive really means send away or let go. When we choose to let go of the other person's sin, then we're eligible to be forgiven of our own sins, to, for God to let go of them. The most profound statement of forgiving, I believe, in the entire Bible the greatest example of letting go is when Jesus hung on the cross with a mob cheering his suffering, slandering him, mocking him. And what he said would never come to mind for me. He said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. They don't realize what they're doing. That, it, that throws away every feeble excuse I can have for not forgiving. I'm convinced that if I deal with my problem, God will let me. But if I turn it over to him, he will deal with those people, not me. Some people think not forgiving that a person uh, holds power over them. Well, I want you to know, when you don't forgive, the power has been held over you. So the first step the individual needs to take is to let go. Because then when we do, then we're not held captive anymore. The theme of the Bible is forgiveness. But since forgiveness is not a part of our nature, it requires supernatural help to make it possible. If we're convinced that something is impossible, it is. But if we let God handle it, it's not impossible at all. Here's the good news. I said the whole Bible's about forgiveness. 1 John 1, 9 says, if they will forgive the... No, if, <laughs> if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Wow. When you come to the Lord, you can't say, Lord... They did some nasty things to me. It's not about them. It's about us. Saying before God. Now our new life begins when we're asking the Lord for forgiveness. And our life, new life continues when we learn to forgive others. Can I say that again? If you don't get anything else out of this service today, get this. Our new life begins when we ask forgiveness from God. Our new life continues when we learn to forgive others others. God's supernatural ability to forgive is what we all need to pray for. Sometimes, I mean, it's taking supernatural help because in our own self, we don't have it. But I believe that the possibilities of God are endless when God's involved in our forgiveness. This morning, I've been talking about the two words, I believe, that apply to this road of forgiveness. The requirement God has given us this is not a suggestion, it's a requirement. If you want eternal life to 
Confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. But the second requirement <laughs> is to forgive others as well. And the possibilities of what happens after that are endless. Healing, restoration, families that are once again reunited again. And God's blessings are here. I can understand why God doesn't bless some people who don't forgive. We're out of his favor. Stand with me this morning, will you? Got a little quiet in here, I understand. You know why? Because it hits every one of us. It applies to everyone here. No one is going to go through this life without a clash somehow taking place. And how we deal with it is so important. Lord, breathe the breath of your Holy Spirit across this room. Before we face that ungodly world, Lord, help us to be different. Help us to reply to things differently than the world does. You said, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will repay. You'll take care of all that, but you want our hearts to be right. If there's anyone here today, your head's about, eyes are closed, you'll say, you know, Pastor, I'm not going to go into details, but I need supernatural help to forgive someone who did some bad things to me. It can go back to your childhood, but don't let it hold you captive. If you say, I need supernatural help to forgive someone who's done me wrong, and I need to get past it because it stays in my mind, it stays in my subconscious, and I want to be right with God to forgive them. I know they don't deserve it, but because I'm required to, I will. If you're here this morning, and right where you stand, you say, Pastor, pray for me. I need supernatural help to forgive others. Slip your hand up and right back down. Amen. If you're here today and you say, Pastor, I really need God's help because there's just anger in me and I need to be released from that anger. I need to get past that and I need God's help. I don't want to pray for you today. Lord, you saw the hands that were raised because the enemy wants to use our past to destroy our future, to destroy our past. But you have given us some requirements, Lord, the requirement to not only be forgiven, but to forgive. We pray, God, that this will make a difference in our day. I want everyone to say these words after me. Lord Jesus, thank you for loving me. In spite of me, you love me. I've not been perfect. I've made my share of mistakes, but I ask you to forgive me. Search my heart, I pray. If there's anything there that displeases you or needs to be forgiven, please forgive me. And now, Lord, I'm asking for a supernatural ability to forgive others, no matter what they've done. I need your help. And I'll give you praise and glory and honor. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. What's that song you sing? I surrender all. Come on, sing it like you mean it. <laughs> I surrender all. All to thee. All. Lord, help us to leave this place different and remembering your requirements. Lord, I thank you for salvation, but also, Lord, I thank you for giving us supernaturally, supernatural ability to forgive others. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you and dismissed.